ahead and get started. So I'd like to thank everyone who is joining us today. Welcome to today's CNC webinar, how to migrate the MySQL database to VTS. So my name is Daniel O. Oh, I'm a principal technical marketing major at Red Hat, as well as I'm a CNCF ambassador. So I'm gonna be moderating today's webinar and we would like to welcome our presenter today, Lisa Bende, the solution architect in a field operation and planning scale. There are a few things, housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee. So there is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. So please feel free to drop your question in there and we will get as many as we can get the end. So this is the official webinar of the CNCF. So, and as such is subject to CNCF code to conduct. So please do not add anything to the chat or question it would be in a violation of the code of the conduct. So basically, please do respect for all of your fellow participants and presenters. And please also note the recording and slides will be posted later today to CNCF webinar page. Uh, you can go to uh, www.cncf.io slash webinars. So I'm gonna hand it over to Reese. Reese, take it away. Thank you very much, Daniel. Um, welcome everyone to today's webinar. Um, so yeah, my name is Liz Van Dyke. Um, I work for Planet Scale, and today I'm going to be talking about Vitess and the things you'll need to consider when moving into it from an existing MySQL-based deployment. To first help establish the why, um, I'm going to be starting off by covering some of the basic concepts about Vitess, and then we'll go over some typical pitfalls and just a few recommended methods to avoid those uh, when making the jump. First, ooh, let's see, a really quick introduction. As I said, my name is Liz. I'm a solution architect at PlanetScale, uh, which recently celebrated its second birthday. Our company's founders were Vitesse's original creators, and uh, our mission as a company is to make it the most trusted cloud-native relational database out there. Um, we are headquartered in Mountain View, but I suppose, like many of you, uh, we're all remote employees currently. Um, I am myself a Belgian. I live in Portugal, but I'm talking to you from California. So um, my background is mainly MySQL, and I'm just beginning to dip my toes into this uh, wacky world of cloud native architectures. So I'm really excited to bring you along as I figure it out. So <clears throat> what is Vitesse? Um, we throw the word cloud native around quite often, but what does that really mean when it comes to databases? Well, 10 years ago, YouTube, which was a real web 2.0 darling, was facing some pretty unique data related challenges. And instead of building something new, their database team at the time decided to try and adapt MySQL. And uh, MySQL by now has seen more than 25 years of active development. Uh, it's got tons of optimizations and durability increases and by itself has great performance and reliability already. Um, that's why it's such a great foundational building block for any application, but it doesn't scale horizontally. So Vitesse was designed as a middleware layer on top of MySQL to provide that transparent sharding logic. And it does so while presenting itself to your application as a single MySQL endpoint. Secondly, um, you might remember that Google had acquired YouTube a couple years prior. So uh, the database team also needed to adjust their framework so it could survive in Google's stateless container orchestration environment. Uh, which is called Borg. Because of this reason, and I only realized this recently myself, uh, we can actually proudly claim that Vitesse was ready to run on Kubernetes even before Kubernetes was first officially released. Um, it was built to be cloud native from the start. So a very quick glance at Vitesse as a part of the CNCF portfolio is right here. Uh, the project itself started in 2010 um, it became an incubation project as part of the CNCF database landscape in early 2018. And as of last November, it was the first project to graduate there. We're going to be releasing 6.0 in April. And some of the features I'm covering in this webinar but everything we're talking about today can be accomplished with Vitesse already. 
Um, I'm not going to go too deeply into the rest of our stats, but uh, suffice to say, it's considered a very healthy and active project by a lot of large scale web companies today. So, as we mentioned, um, Vitesse is based on good old MySQL and it's built with the potential of massive scale in mind. That means it comes with a fairly large amount of bells and whistles attached. So to help take in, let's take a look at our reference architecture. Uh, quite a lot going on in this diagram, but understanding it is going to be very helpful in our later explanations about how we can gradually build up to an environment just like it. As I explained before, Vitesse speaks MySQL, and even when split across many different shards, it's going to present itself to your application as a unified MySQL database. So what's on the left of the dotted line in this diagram could be anything from a MySQL GUI client. Um, it could be your custom application, or it could be, say, a CDC system capturing information for auditing. So to those applications, Vitesse and MySQL should be largely interchangeable. Um, I do have to use the word largely because the compatibility as of right now is not quite at 100%, even though it's getting closer every day. Now, like a lot of systems built for scale, um, it's very important to consider that just because Vitesse lets you execute something without spitting out an error doesn't necessarily make that thing the right thing to do. So as your application scales, you're going to be learning lessons about which architectural choices do and don't work. Um, we'll get into the ways to gradually close that gap for your application though, so there doesn't need to be one big dramatic cutover. For now, um, let's quickly discuss what we're looking at here. From the ground up, we can see that all of the components in Vitesse are meant to be treated as cattle rather than pets. Um, especially in the query path, each element is built to be duplicated and recoverable from sudden failure. This is why it's such a natural fit for Kubernetes and uh, any environment where resources might be added or purged as needed, sometimes even at a moment's notice. So um, it's also what makes it very easy for us to build a gradual transition path for your existing production workload. So let's take a closer look at these building blocks uh, real quick uh, to build a bit of foundational knowledge about how Vitesse works. Behind uh, the load balancer in that diagram just now, you saw what we call the VT gate. Um, this is your application's entry point to Vitesse. By itself, it's a very light uh, stateless proxy. It contains a SQL interpreter, keeps itself informed as to the state of the cluster. So it knows at any point in time exactly how to break down your requests. Sorry, did someone just join? Okay. Um, it's also going to transparently select the correct shard for you to select from. And it supports and respects a large variety of native SQL terms like joins and transactions. Um, it also has a couple of built-in optimizations like connection pooling to help boost performance. I'm sorry, I'm just going to um, mute or just join because we're getting some uh, feedback here. Or can someone of the moderators help do that for me, please. All right, so as I said, VTGate has got a couple of built-in optimizations uh, like connection pooling to help boost performance. And uh, it also installs some guardrails around queries that could potentially harm our cluster. Um, so VTGate presents itself as a unified database despite being connected to multiple instances of MySQL underneath. And the concept of this unified database is what we call a key space. We know that as far as instances go, each shard may have multiple copies of our data, um, but the overall design of our database schema and how it presents itself is still very important. Key spaces in Vitesse are defined by the combination of a good old normal schema file, as well as the added V schema, which describes the sharding related metadata in a JSON format. A key space can consist of one or multiple shards. And just to be clear on this, a shard can contain a portion of the data contained in your database. 
shards. And within each shard, we generally recommend spinning up at least three replica tablets to ensure high availability on that level. Uh, within a shard, replication is managed by Vitesse, but it uses MySQL standard replication functionality. Um, so we use the same terminology to describe them. So zooming in on the shard itself, and I guess I jumped to this slide a little too soon. So zooming in um, on the shard itself, these are made up of one or more Vitesse tablets. So as we said, the recommended amount, minimum amount for high availability is three. Um, but these Vitesse tablets are the smallest worker units that we have available. And it's where existing MySQL users should be getting into more familiar territory. Um, the Vitesse tablet is made up of a normal MySQL server process um, and a small VT tablet sidecar process that helps inject the logic that we need to make MySQL sharding aware. Um, this pair of processes could run anywhere that you would like to run MySQL. Um, you could run it on a bare metal machine, on a virtual machine, inside of a container, and the MySQL server flavor that is used, um, we're actually agnostic to. So it could be any type or version uh, that you're already familiar with or running. Now, within a shard, VTGate is able to send reads to each available tablet, but the writes are reserved for only a master tablet, uh, of which there's always just one. So to make sure that within a given shard, we always have at least two fully consistent copies of our data, uh, we do recommend that you run your tablets in semi-synchronous replication mode, uh, which means that tablet is not going to commit a write to its data files uh, until at least one slave has acknowledged the change. Um, I want to give you a very quick look at um, what all of this looks like. So I'm going to jump into a real quick demo here. Uh, this GUI is not a standard part of the test, but it helps me illustrate all of the previously mentioned concepts a little bit more easily. Um, so while we were talking, we discussed a couple of different elements. Uh, so we talked about VTGate, we talked about uh, key spaces and shard, um, a sharding schema, as well as a normal database schema. And uh, I just want to give you a first look at what that looks like. So over here, um, we can see basically a, a dashboard of what it looks like to run Vitesse. Um, I'm just using a little e example application here for a variety of talks. So if you've seen some of our talks at conferences, you might recognize the name of this database. Um, but just to give you a quick peek, um, the Vitesse really to give you a look at the schema real quick. So as you can see, our schema is made up of normal SQL. It looks very familiar. There's nothing strange going on here. This just looks like a good old MySQL database schema. Very simple uh, database here, just three tables. Um, but on top of that schema, we do need to embed a little bit more um, logic to ensure that sharding works properly as expected. So we have a sharding schema on top of that, which in, in Vitesse is called the V schema. And we discussed that earlier. So the V schema is described by a JSON file um, that essentially it, it latches onto the existing schema definition and, and just adds more metadata to it. Um, it helps us define a variety of um, details here. Um, I won't get into the the specifics of how to build a V schema too deeply um, on this talk because there's there's hours that we could fill about that. Um, but I wanted to give you a quick idea of what it looks like. And we'll talk about some methods um, to go back and forth and, and testing whether your design is being effective or not. Now, <clears throat> just to uh, illustrate that Vitesse actually does look and feel exactly like MySQL. So to your uh, application, um, the, 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 the endpoint that you're connecting to um, should be no different. Um, like the connector that you're using to, to get to MySQL today is the same one that you'll be using to get into the tests. 
Um, and I'm just going to grab this connection string from right here to show exactly what that looks like. So our database in this case um, has a couple of instances running. So we have one master and three replicas right now. Um, but as we are logging into this database, we're using this connection string, uh, we'll actually be logging into the VT gate, which will display um, all of the, you know, which is essentially going to display a unified overview um, of what's going on in the background. So let me show that real quick, how that works. So I just copied the connection string, just using normal MySQL client. Um, as we're logging in, you can see the server version right here, the Vitesse MySQL community server. That's actually uh, what's telling us that we're logging into VT gate. But operationally, you will see that it works very similarly. So we have two databases available. I'm going to use one of them just to prove that this really does look and feel exactly like my SQL. So I'm just going to run a query here. And I would show you a couple of really, really nice photos of very, very beautiful dogs that we could rate, but uh, that's not within the scope of this current <laughs> presentation. Um, yes. But this was just essentially to, to, to show that once, go ahead. Could you turn off your video? Your audio is cutting out every once in a while. Okay, will do. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, had not seen those messages. All right, so let's hope that this stays more stable. Um, please feel free to let me know if, uh, if there are any more issues moving forward. Okay, so this was just a quick demo to show um, or to illustrate that when Vitesse is up and running, um, even though there's a lot of complexity in the background, um, to your application, it actually looks and feels just like a, uh, like an individual, like a single MySQL endpoint. And all of the logic required to distribute your queries um, is kind of abstracted away from your application. So going back to the slides, um, Bringing back the architecture slide, um, let's collect all of those components that we talked about and start thinking about how we can move towards our implementation. So there's a few critical items to consider when moving to the test today. As I mentioned before, it's not yet 100% compatible with all of MySQL's query language, uh, but even where compatibility is not an issue, Queries might respond differently in a sharded environment uh, than you'd expect. And it's important to start familiarizing yourself with what makes or breaks a sharding strategy. Um, the bottom line is that whenever queries can easily be filtered by the same column that makes up your sharding key, behavior should be exactly as expected. Um, but, and if you do a lot of cross shard data gathering though, uh, you might find yourself surprised by the impact to your performance. So, um, as I said, like in any relational database, just because your query works doesn't mean that using it is a good idea. Um, make sure to test your query workload extensively and expect that you'll need to do some rewriting um, in most cases. So where and how do we even start that process? Now, the first step, the very first step to assessing your workload's compatibility uh, can be done without even installing the tests thanks to a tool called VT Explain. Um, this tool is analogous to MySQL's explain statement. And uh, when it's fed a V schema and a schema file, this tool is going to return a breakdown of how VT gate is expected to handle the query in a real cluster environment. So um, it's also going to provide immediate feedback in case your query is not supported at all by the tests. Um, rather than setting up a full Vitesse cluster from the start, this step could be executed on anyone's local machine. I'm going to show that uh, momentarily in a, in a brief demo. Um, you, can, uh, you can grab VT Explain either by getting the latest Vitesse packages or um, building the tool from source. Now, just because you can run it locally doesn't mean you'll be able to start completely unprepared. 
Uh, first and foremost, to get started, um, we're going to want a, a solid snapshot of your actual load. So some monitoring tools like PMM or Vivid Cortex allow you to already take a normalized set of queries to use, uh, which is definitely a very efficient way to test. But if you don't use either of those monitoring uh, services, you can also create your own normalized query list by uh, collecting a set of queries um, in production yourself. Uh, you can do so by setting MySQL's slow query logging feature to log all queries for a limited amount of time, um, however long it takes to capture a representative sample, and then running that throughput um, through the PT Query Digest tool uh, to get a ranked list of your most impactful queries. Um, and those will be normalized as well. So you'll have a nice clean list to work with and get a good idea um, of how Vitesse will respond to them. So once you've done that, uh, you're gonna want to read up on schema and vSchema design. Um, there is a lot to consider when building the right vSchema and testing your design with VT Explain is a very important step towards getting that right in the first place. Um, as a rule of thumb, if you're always selecting information as filtered by a specific customer or business ID, those tend to be good starting points for your scart the sharding key. Uh, try it out though with VT Explain to see how well your vSchema works with your existing query workload or how either your schema or your queries can be tweaked for better results. Um, how to go about this. There's a ton of text on this slide, but I wanted to make sure it was included. So um, you had some immediate uh, examples to get started on. So, so this essentially is a minimal example of how this works. Um, on the top of the slide here is our current schema definition, which is no different than you would see uh, in MySQL. And off to the right is our vSchema for this database, which has a single key space defined as sharded on the column data for both tables. If we run the VT explain command, and uh, we're assuming a shard count of two, we can see from the output uh, exactly how VT gate will break the query down into pieces and gather information across the cluster. Um, now, VTGate doesn't actually connect to anything. It's not connecting to an actual uh, topology server. So there is no Vitesse cluster right now to help us predict. We can give it a clue. We can give it the amount of shards that we uh, predict we'll, we'll need to use. And it will make its determination based on the information that we're feeding it here. Um, but it's, it's going to give you a sense of how VTGate is going to respond to that query, um, how it will need to break apart um, the query to um, make sure that it's it's you know it's it's um, accessing the correct shards. Um, rather than have you just believe me though, uh, I'm just going to show it off real quick. So let's do another short demo. Um, right here. Oh shoot! I think I am already in the right folder. Okay, so I have the VT explain binary just installed right here in my uh, in my demo folder. I also have exactly those two files as displayed on the slide. So if you get these slides, you can just copy paste both of those um, yourself to give this a quick shot. And uh, because it's a rather long command, I did execute it right before starting here. If we want to run VT explain uh, to get a sense of how it would work, um, here is the here, here is how you break down the code itself. So we've got VT explain. We're specifying our schema file, which is just our uh, normal schema definition, our vSchema file. Um, which is the Vitesse related uh, metadata. Um, we can pass it a number of shards just to get a sense of how, um, how a query might be broken down in a sharded environment. And then you, you can uh, um, 
enter individual query to see uh, what the result would be. Now, based on uh, how we're filtering this query, um, the fact that we're using data and um, we're using data as a, as a filtering column and we're specifying an exact value here, VTGate will be able, um, based on the, on the, um, the index that we defined in our vschema, the vindex, um, it, it knows it should be able to find the results on a single shard. So what happens when you send this query to VTGate um, is going to send it right away to the exact shard um, it predicts will um, contain the correct answer. So here in this list, uh, right now only one query has been executed. You can see the steps that VTGate needs to take to execute this query. Um, in our current example, this is a perfectly normal supported query, uh, so we're not getting an error in return. Um, in, you know, in case you have a query workload that um, has some unsupported language, um, you're also going to get a, an immediate uh, error result with a, with a clear message about that. So just to give an example, um, the reason that we're only, that we're only um, querying a single shard, even though we've specified that there are two shards available is because we're giving an explicit value here. Um, but if we're writing up a query that does a comparison, for example, uh, we'll see that right away, Vitesse will need to start querying every single shard to make sure um, that each row is matched against this uh, requirement. So given that we're specifying two shards, um, in this gate, VTGate predicts that we will be um, we will be sending the query to both. I'm just going to show that as we increase our shard count, that will keep applying. So say that we're um, specifying eight shards, we can see that the query is likely to be executed on all eight shards um, because we need all of our rows. Now, VTGate as, um, as a rule will, you know, will just compile the set of results and return it back to your application as a, as a single table, um, just as MySQL would. But VT Explain allows you to figure out um, what, you know, how it needs to go about um, gathering your data and uh, what the expected impact is going to be. So um, this actually helps you um, tweak both your, your vSchema or your queries. It kind of helps you def uh, understand uh, where you can make some adjustments through trial and error um, to, to try and improve um, how well your workload is, uh, is going to be a fit for a sharding environment. So, okay. Just a quick summary of VT Explain. Um, it's a pretty handy tool and it's kind of the, the first step that we recommend anyone take when you're considering uh, moving your existing workload into Vitesse. Um, and it, it will bring you a long way um, into making sure that your uh, application is, a, is the right fit, is set up for success there. So, oops. Now that we have built an understanding of our workloads through some trial and error, um, we're going to want to start building out of a test environment um, in your dev QA uh, environment. So given the many moving parts of a test, just getting operationally familiar with it is going to go a long way to being able to perform the steps in this migration. Um, Sorry, just, I think I missed the slide here. So a good way to get started, um, I would recommend is to run through uh, the various tutorials on, on Vitesse.io that are gonna help you uh, walk through the steps as I showed in the demo right here, but also get an, a full environment up and running. So once you've, once you've completed uh, your analysis with VT Explain and you're feeling confident that um, you'll be able to get started, you'd like to figure out um, how this all works uh, in a real Vitesse space, um, I recommend running through those tutorials and from there kind of build up towards adding your own 
uh, schema and V schema for more extensive testing. So remember to check off not just your own application, but consider any additional applications that might be accessing your database, like uh, doing analytics or change data capture that might be shipping data off to another location. Um, those are often items that tend to be forgotten uh, when the database layer is uh, adjusted, but for sure when moving to Vitesse, those need to be considered as well. Now, beyond queries, um, another aspect to consider with Vitesse is the additional network latency created by VTGate. Um, if you are already running a load balancer, this should not be too unfamiliar. But uh, under normal circumstances, we expect VTGate to add about one to two milliseconds to your round trip time. So um, add another one to two milliseconds if you're just introducing a load balancer for the first time as well. And uh, generally speaking, VTGate by itself adds almost no time at all to your queries and uh, it may actually speed them up thanks to the performance enhancements. Um, so we consider this additional latency well within tolerable levels for most applications. Um, but if yours is particularly sensitive to latency, it makes a lot of sense to spend some extra time testing in the dev QA environment. Now, provided that we've done everything we can to learn about Vitesse and how it fits into our environment. And uh, we're feeling just about ready to dip our toes into production. Um, Vitesse's modular design makes it very easy for us to do a gradual shift in production while retaining the ability to roll back if anything seems particularly off. Um, we call this a canary deployment. And the idea is that we start off by diverting just a small percentage of our production traffic to a VT gate and a VT tablet so that we can see the results in real time. I'm going to pull in our diagram uh, one more time to refresh your memory of the components that we covered earlier and how they all work together in our reference architecture. Um, pulling this up specifically because now you can uh, look at this uh, <laughs> illustration uh, of a s slightly simplified and uh, less beautiful rendition um, just to help us illustrate the operational steps that we're going to try and take here to start building up towards this uh, reference architecture. So um, we can start up a Vitesse environment around an existing MySQL server, um, which by itself is going to continue to work completely unaffected. Um, critical to achieving that is to set up your VT tablet uh, process to treat MySQL as remote or unmanaged. Um, so VT tablets will be acting uh, purely as a pass-through layer without attempting to manage the original instance by say controlling its replication settings or trying to take backups. So VT tablets can be set up in such a way that it's, it's only acting as a, as a pass through layer. Um, VT gate, our proxy is kind of agnostic to this distinction and it's going to treat this original MySQL instance as a fully fledged uncharted key space. So, we have a parallel query path available that's going to run through most components of Vitesse, even without having established a fully managed Vitesse key space. So how we dip our toes and start to divert traffic um, is strongly dependent on your application design. If you are using your own application internally, uh, we would recommend starting off there and just using, you know, using it in production in house. Um, so divert some of, you know, divert some of your internal traffic um, through VTGate to start, just to start trickling that through. Or another idea is if you have a defined group of beta subscribers, that could also be a good place to start. Um, but however it's accomplished, we do recommend starting small and switching more of the traffic over as your confidence grows. Um, this is a process that you could take days, weeks, even months to complete, um, however long you need. Um, but it should definitely be completed before moving on to the next stage. 
So um, once our cutover has completed and we do have all of our traffic running through VT gates, uh, we're still not re running a fully fledged uh, Vitesse tablet here, um, but we have started we are at least running all of our traffic through a VT gates already, and we should start seeing um, the uh, the impact there. So there's some there's some confidence to be built there. Um, so once we have this set up, we can consider spinning up a real Vitess tablet um, to prepare for a gradual migration of our data. Um, so we are going to use to accomplish this we're going to use a vitess workflow called table migration um, which specifically is going to come out with vitess 6 to start separating out these tables needing to be sharded so in previous versions of vitess uh, this process was called vertical sp vertical split clone and it used a slightly different internal mechanics to uh, accomplish a similar goal uh, the goal being uh, to perform a live table copy and a traffic cutover between running two running instances of MySQL. So in Vitesse 6, uh, table migration is based on a feature called vReplication, which can be used in countless scenarios uh, requiring data to be moved around between different members of the cluster. Now, we're using table migration. Um, there's a little bit more information here. Um, as we're copying that over, uh, when the process has completed, your newly migrated tables are going to be running in a separate key space. Um, though, thanks to VTGate, uh, you'll still be allowed to join tables between both of those environments. So we've moved over um, some tables to a completely different MySQL instance, a, a separate key space, but VTGate still allows us to join tables. Um, the Vitesse tablet, as it's spun up, is also going to enjoy the benefits of being fully managed by Vitesse. Uh, so that means it can be very easily uh, made ready for high availability just by having multiple replicas spun up. Um, it's going to have its backups taken automatically, et cetera. So as you're building your familiarity with Vitesse, um, this very same process can be used to eventually migrate all of your tables. Um, it's a great way to build some confidence and to future-proof your stack, especially if this is also part of a greater overarching move towards embracing Kubernetes for other parts of your application. Um, the ability to use a canary and a very gradual cutover for all of these components is a very effective way to minimize your risk as you're transforming your database architecture into a cloud-native one. Um, so. There's a more description of the process itself. Uh, just a couple of highlights here about the setup. Um, as I mentioned before, our legacy MySQL instance is treated as an uncharted key space. Um, by itself, that MySQL instance is untouched, unmanaged. It doesn't really require any changes. Um, in our example, I didn't really get into sharding for the new key space, but we might as well have. Uh, so don't hesitate to dive into the documentation to familiarize yourself and skip a few steps ahead if you know it, it is exactly what your environment needs. Um, Vitesse has workflows available for all of these major reconfigurations and data migrations. And uh, Planet Scale Engineering has also been hard at work at a new set of migration tools that will serve to better support this process every step of the way, uh, just making it easier for you to generate an initial vSchema as well as automating much of the table migration workflow. So um, more to come on that pretty soon. Either way, um, until then, there's a great set of tutorials available on the Vitesse.io website. Um, these are honestly the way that I've been training myself. Uh, they're not perfect, but all that means is that we clearly would love your contributions and your feedback on how to make them better. And uh, you should go check them out. I'm just going to click through real fast here so you get a look. There's a couple of uh, very important operations here um, that have clear user guides built up around them. And I highly recommend them as a way for you to get familiar with how all of this works. Um, and whoop, 
I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this webinar as much as I enjoyed delivering it. Uh, my goal was to inspire some confidence in the fact that there's methods that will allow you to safely and gradually support your adoption of container orchestrated cloud environments without having to leave your database behind. Um, Thank you very much for listening. Don't hesitate to reach out on the Vitesse community Slack if you end up trying out those tutorials. Um, so as I, as I mentioned at the start, I'm just getting started in this world myself, but I'm uh, happy to be joined by two contributing engineers today uh, who can help answer any questions I'm not able to field myself. And uh, on that note, Deepthi, Morgan and I are happy to dive in and ready for some Q&A. Awesome. Uh, thanks a raise for a great presentation and demo. So we are now have some time for questions. So if you have any question, just please uh, just uh, drop into the Q&A top uh, at the bottom of your screen and we will get as many as soon as we have time for. So by the way, we have a two question here. The first one is, is it possible to be used to MariaDB? Uh, uh, yes, um, I'll be ahead. able to answer that right away. Um, it is possible to use MariaDB or any flavor uh, of MySQL as your backing database. So you can build, uh, you can attach a Vitesse tablet to any flavor of MySQL um, as of right now. I see awesome. a ni nice follow-up question there. Um, is it possible to use PostgreSQL? Um, no, no, as of Right now, Vitesse uh, support only MySQL um, as, a, as a backing database. Um, this is a question that's come up quite regularly though, so it's definitely something that we're considering for the future. Um, but as of right now, PostgreSQL is not supported and uh, it is quite a ways out. It is in fact in the roadmap. But I have, oh. to, I have to put the disclaimer around that, that it is going to be quite a ways out. Um, as of right now, we're MySQL centric. Yeah, we have a, one more question came up and actually two more. So how are the rescheduled to replicas are their session affinity options? Um, I'm going to uh, ask Morgan to answer that question. Morgan, I'm just going to repeat it real quick. So how are the reads scheduled to the replicas exactly? Are there session affinity options there? Sure. So it, you can uh, read from a replica by using a specially named schema to switch to. Uh, in terms of affinity, uh, if you start a transaction, you will have affinity to your master. But if you're in auto commit mode, uh, the test will try and balance that between the replicas that you have available. Um, okay, cool. Thank you, Morgan. Next question looks like, um, could you explain a bit more on how to migrate uh, the existing data into shards? Uh, any tools available for it? We have a 32 terabyte in ODB table. Um, I suppose <laughs> I can take a crack. I can take a crack at this uh, at this at this question, but it is a relatively large one, and it's highly dependent on the design of your schema. Um, the the reason or the approach that we've proposed here in this talk um, is is meant to accommodate a very gradual switch over uh, but i believe that what you're asking for is more of a more of a set of general guidelines as to how to approach um, breaking up your data into shards and and, and which um, you know which schema changes or which v schema would be the right fit for your particular um, um, database so without having more information it's kind of hard um, to get into your question but i do uh, want to invite you for sure to um, join the vitesse slack community um, where you know people will be able to get into your environment with a bit more detail and, and, and try and, um, you know, get, get a little bit more and give you a little bit more information and a little, little bit more of a, 
background about how to start approaching this. Um, it's, it's going to be multiple steps, uh, basically depending on your current, um, your current schema and how much of it you're willing to change to, to adapt it to a sharded environment. Um, th thanks, Liz. I might just add a, a couple of points on that because it is quite a large database. Um, the tests in, in being cloud native, it encourages you to run with smaller shards so that if you have a failure, it can kind of move the data around quickly, you know, so that you have this, you have this probability where you could have a failure while you're doing a, a redistribution. So it encourages shards to be about 250 gigabytes each. Uh, knowing that that takes about 10 or 15 minutes to be able to copy that data if you had to um, uh, move that to another node. So as you move into the tests, you know, how you're choosing that that shard key will end up being one of the things that you want to figure out first. And um, that's something like that uh, the Vitesse community can help you out with. If I may also jump in, uh, if this is really a single table that is 32 terabytes, with Vitus, it is definitely possible to shard it. It may just be a, a long process. And as far as tools for accomplishing the actual sharding, they are part of Vitus. The rest of it, uh, what your sharding key is and uh, any other changes that might make that process easier, that of course is dependent on uh, the data characteristics and your current schema. Thank you very much, Deepthi and Morgan. Um, let's see, there's a next question here. Uh, we are currently using proxy SQL for query routing. Uh, for migrating to Vitesse, would we swap out talking to proxy SQL for VT gate? Um, Christopher, that is uh, correct. Um, yes, so VT gate could be considered uh, analogous to proxy SQL in your current environment and it, it, it covers uh, a lot of very similar um, uh, requirements. And then the last question that I'm seeing uh, right here, uh, second question is, would it work with Percona extra DB cluster? Um, that's an interesting, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Um, I, I, I don't believe that we would be using an individual PXC node as a, a backing database for Vitesse, but Morgan, I believe in theory we could. Sure. <laughs> we probably could, yeah. <laughs> you definitely could if you used an externally managed. Vitesse kind of gives you both choices. As something that's managed by Vitesse, uh, we encourage you to use SemiSync as the HA solution. Indeed. So uh, just to provide a little bit more background there. So we are in fact very, um, there's, there's ways that you can run uh, the VT tablet process in a very transparent way. Um, and this is, this is the way that we would recommend running if you had to use PXC as your backing uh, database. But in theory, yes, you could use VT tablet um, as a front uh, for PXC as well. Um, in that case, you would just not um, you would just not let Vitesse manage your uh, replication settings um, and choose to rely on PXC for that. I believe that is it for questions. Yeah. All right, uh, thanks Luis for the great presentation once again and demo and uh, thanks for answering the Morgan and DP. So yeah, that is all the question we have time for today. And thanks for joining us today again. And the webinar recording and slides will be online later today. And we are looking forward to seeing you at future CNC uh, webinar as well. So uh, have a really good day. Thank you very much, everyone.